So the main thing that I work on are materials with a cellular structure. So when we say cellular, we mean uh, materials that have an interconnected network of struts or plates. So things like engineering honeycombs and foams. But lots of natural materials have this kind of structure too. So for example, most people are familiar with things like wood. Wood has cells that look a little like a honeycomb and uh, you can use the models we've developed for engineering honeycombs to look at the properties of, of wood. So there's a number of examples of materials in nature. Wood is one. There's a type of bone in the body called trabecular bone that also has this porous foam-like structure. You can look at uh, plant leaves, plant stems, uh, bamboo, all, all sorts of things like that. Uh, we've also looked at a number of medical materials that have this porous foam-like structure. So for instance, right now there's a lot of interest in scaffolds for tissue engineering, for regenerating tissues. And the scaffolds really uh, are designed to mimic the extracellular matrix in the body that the cells attach to and they have a very foam-like structure and so you can look at them the same way as you look at foams. So another thing that I've done uh, while at MIT is to write books uh, related to cellular materials. Uh, the first book is called um, Cellular Solids Structure and Properties and it's co-authored with Mike Ashby from Cambridge University. It really covers the modeling of a wide range of cellular materials, everything from the engineering honeycombs and foams to some of the natural materials like wood and cork and trabecular bone. And this really has provided a, a sort of a, a, a single place that researchers can go to and get the basic modeling and the basic understanding of these materials. And the book has been uh, quite widely used. Uh, and one of the things that motivated us to actually write this book was to try to bring together the understanding of these cellular materials. Uh, when we first started working in this field, we found that there was a, a separate literature on many of these individual materials. So there was a whole literature on, say, plastic foams. There was another literature on wood. There was another set of literature on trabecular bone. But these things were really entirely independent. Uh, people didn't really see that because these materials had a similarity in their structure that there would be a similarity in their mechanical behavior. And so there was, so the people working in these three areas were pretty much separate and didn't talk to each other too much. And one of the things that we've been able to do partly through, uh, we've been able to do partly through writing the book uh, is to bring these fields together and to demonstrate that there's similarities in their behavior. And now people can see how the similarities in the structure give rise to similarities in the mechanical properties. And it sort of brings a unifying uh, approach to these types of materials. More recently, we've written a second book called Cellular Materials in Nature and Medicine. That's co-authored with Mike Ashby again and with Brendan Harley, uh, one of my former students. And uh, it focuses more on cellular materials uh, with a biological perspective. So we talk a lot about uh, plant-based materials, things like wood and cork and bamboo and plant stems and plant leaves, and also medical materials. So things like the trabecular bone in more detail, uh, things like the tissue engineering scaffolds and how they're used to regenerate tissues, and also how biological cells in the body interact with the scaffolds themselves. So, so it, it, it's a similar theme, but, uh, but a slightly diff different emphasis on the biological aspects of cellular materials.